I can't say the same to you because you're not a father. No, I am. Oh, cool. Kenwick Walker. Just a mother. Oh, just. Yes, yes, she's the baby. Just? 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 Yes, she's the baby. Just?
Good morning, the Lord be with you. And also with you. As always, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord to worship Him, to thank Him for His love, for His mercy, for His kindness, and for blessing that He gives us without any merit from our part. Well, today we worship Him, our Father in heaven, and we want to. I want to thank uh, Him for allowing us fathers to be here on earth. So it's a great responsibility, but fulfilling responsibility when God is always with us, helping us to take care of those dear for us, our family, our spouses, our children. So congratulations to all the fathers. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Thank you. Um, well, and... I see Zoe there, and, and Derek, thank you for coming and worshiping with us as well. So we follow the order of service was being printed for this occasion, and this is with Holy Communion. Um, today we celebrate in the Christian Church the first Sunday after Pentecost. We have a few announcements to begin. First, thanks for all those who are serving in God's house this morning. And take the bulletin with you. Most of those uh, activities are repeated, so you could uh, read it at home. Uh, remember, Grace is very social that we are planning, and there are a group of people now that will have joined us, and that's wonderful. Thanks for, for your help in order to have a, a great event on that day. We're going to have music, a, a band will be playing, and, and the strawberry. Uh, that's wonderful and good conversation. So all are welcome and invite friends as well to come and, and to hear God's word through the music and spend good time together. Um, and for this week, and at, at the end of the bulletin, what we have this week at Faith and Grace is trustees meeting uh, at Faith in, in London at 6.30. And at 7.30 we have the council. So those who have responsibility as a trustees or members of the council, elders are welcome to participate in that, in that meeting and take decisions for faith and, and grace as well. And take the bulletin with you, you will see other activities that we are planning. So I guess we, we are ready to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, another thing before I forget, you see, no, we don't have a, somebody who play the piano. Unless one of you would like to try right now. <laughs> so, it, hints are easy, well, it's what I, I think. Um, and plan B as well, she was not able to come, able to, to, to do it this morning as well. So, mm -hmm. at the end, so plan C is to sing a cappella. <laughs> so, we are going to do that. Okay, so, 
And, and the, the first hymn that we have this morning, we're going to begin with uh, the opening hymn, that is great is thy faithfulness. And I think that we know that oh, one. So, so all, all those musicians, please, start. <laughs> The third thing. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changes not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been the Lord. Responsibility in your service, 
and our imperfect stewardship <coughs> of your gifts. Have mercy, have mercy on us, us and forgive us, us o Lord. Lord. Forgive us that we have been thoughtless in our judgments, hasty in condemnation, grudging forgiveness, slow to seek reconciliation, and unwilling to help our neighbors as we ought. Have, have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and put a new right spirit within us. Dear friends in Christ, upon this your confession, and by the command of our Lord, I, a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, <coughs> and may your Holy Spirit, soul, and body, with the brightness of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. We continue with the entry, which is Psalm, a few verses from Psalm 67. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God our God shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory, Glory to you, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Each and every year, Father's Day comes around. And though it may be a tradition, that does not see as exciting as other holidays. It is an important occasion. The love of a father for his children, celebrated on this day, <coughs> is an earthly reflection of God's eternal love for his children. Father's Day is the perfect time to show the special dad or father figure in your life that you love and appreciate them. We honor our Father in heaven, singing a hymn of praise. How great thou art. <coughs> Stances one <coughs> and four. Okay. Oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder, consider Yeah. 
sings, my soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises, that we may receive eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let us hear God's word. Thanks be to God. Holy 
gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus calls and then sends out his, his disciples. Please rise to hear the gospel. Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaseus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You receive without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold, nor silver, nor copper for your belt, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics, tunics, nor sandals, nor staff for the laborer that serve his food. In whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now let us confess our Christian faith, speaking the nice and clear. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of gods, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being in one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnated by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also to us under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to the judge of the dead and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I 
believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and whom the Father and the Son together is the worship and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. You may be said to continue singing Amazing Grace.
as a special opportunity to ridicule the church. Pointing out that so often Christians think they are better than others. But really, they are just as bad, if not worse. But really, Christians are not people who are better than others. They are just people who are better off. And we are better off because we are special. Not that we are special in ourselves, but we are special to God, precious to Him, and loved by Him. We are so special to Him, and He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows how many strands of hair there are in our heads. He knows what's going to happen to us. He knows what is in our heart. God loves us so much that He sent Jesus to die for our sins. That definitely tells us something about our Father in heaven. It tells us just how much He cares about us. For who else cares about us so much that they would be concerned with something so seemingly unimportant as the number of hairs we have. No, no matter how many hairs we have on, 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 the, on the head, okay? You could have a little bit or a lot, but he knows all of them. If you have only 20, okay. If I have 30, okay. Doesn't matter. He knows everything. He knows that how many hairs we have on our head. That kind of love and concern tell us that we are special to God and precious to Him. I think there are many times in our lives, especially when we feel unloved or unimportant, when we need to know that we are special to God, to Him. That is the assurance that we have in our text this morning, our first reading. No matter what the rest of the world may think of us, no matter how we might feel about ourselves, we can always remember that we are something special to our loving God who cares about us. We all hunger and thirst for the deep and abiding satisfaction of knowing that we are loved. And one of the things that love does for us is provide us with a feeling of self-worth. There is a, even a song by the late singer, actor, and comedian, Dean Martin, which says, You are nobody till somebody loves you. You are nobody till somebody cares. But God tells us more than that. Not only does He tell us that He loves us, but He also tells us and shows us that we are special to him. That was what Moses was to tell the people of Israel. Our text says, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, You yourself have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey Obey my voice and keep my covenant. You shall be my treasure possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. God wanted his people to know that they were special to him, that they were his treasure possessions. And the people of Israel had proof that they were special to God. He was the one who had delivered them from slavery in Egypt. He was the one who had provided them with food, who had cared for them day after day. While they were in the wilderness for 40 years, and he did all this. Not because they were better than anyone else, not because they were a greater nation than any other nation, but because he loved them. He even tells them, you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Out of all that he has created, 
out of all the mighty empires, he could choose a something special for himself, God chose the nation of Israel to be his treasured possessions. We all have something that is special to us. A ring or a bracelet that has been received as a heritage, a special gift from our spouse or children or a friend. Something that we are especially proud of. We treasure that object and it is it is put in a special place or carried all the time and treated with special care just because it is special to us. That is exactly how God feels about the people he calls as his own. You. He promised them, promised us, I will be your God and you will be my people. I will continue to watch over you and bless you. I will treat you as my greatest treasure. I will always love you. <clears throat> Friends in Christ, the same things that God told the people of, of Israel of being his treasure. He also says to those who are his people through faith in Jesus Christ. He considers us us to be his greatest treasure. He considers us something special. And if we should ever doubt that we are special to him, all we need to do is remember the price God was willing to pay to make us his own. We are so special to him that God was willing to give his own son to die on the cross to take away the sin that separate us from him. Jesus died on, the, on that cross to redeem us for God, to buy us back for him from the sin that was destroying us. And when Jesus rose again from the dead, he declared that God has done what he had planned. He has purchased and won us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. He has made us his own and treasures us as his greatest possessions. And when you stop and think about it, it is truly a gift of God's amazing grace that he should treat us as something special, especially in light of the way we so often treat him. What have we ever done that is worthy of any special treatment from God? What have we done? The answer should be obvious. We are totally unworthy of His love and kindness. But still, still He loves us. He cares about us. He considers us something special. And in the seven actions of Christ, he shows us just how special we are to him. That is a promise we can take with us wherever we go. Even if the whole world should turn against us, even if it seems that no one cares about us, we are still loved by God and special to him. It makes a great difference for our lives to know that we are special to God. But we are more than just special to God. We are also special through God. In Christ, God not only shows us how special we are to Him, but He makes us new people, something uniquely special through Christ. When God told the people of Israel that they were his treasured possessions, he also told them, You shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. In 1 Peter, the Apostle Peter, 
right in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He tells us the same thing. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Friends in Christ, I sometimes think that we forget this aspect of our lives as God's people. At times it seems that even though we may not be ashamed to be known as the people of God, we are not too proud of it either. As Christians, we are to be different from the people of this world. For we are something special to God and through God. That does not mean we should consider ourselves better than they are. No, but we are to be different in the actions of our lives. We are to show the world what it means to us to know that we are special to God and that we are special in Christ. We do that as we serve our God faithfully living in obedience to his commands, seeking with the help of the Holy Spirit to be holy even as our Father in heaven is holy. But we are also to live as the special people of God for the benefit of the world. As the holy people of God, we are to be his representatives to the world, serving as his priests. And to be his priest simply means that we are to share with the world the wonderful message of hope and life that our God has given to us in his son Jesus Christ. Whether we are at work or on vacation, at home or at church, people should be able to see that we are something special to God. They should be able to tell that there is something special about us because of our relationship to God. And what they should see is not how wonderful we are, but how wonderful our God is. They should see how His forgiving love has changed our lives for the better. They should be able to see how his comfort and strength make a difference to us in the troubled times of life. They should see that in him we have the hope of a better life. The life that comes when we leave this world to be with the Lord forever. I think that we, as the people of God, as people who are special to him, need to be proud of what we are, not boastful, but proud and just as a person who display a treasure work of art so that others can enjoy its beauty. We should let others see in us the beauty of life as the special treasure of God. Dear believers in Christ, you may not think that you are special, but you are. You are special to God, who treats us as his greatest treasure. We are also special through God as we serve him through the power of the Holy Spirit as his priest in this world. May God enable us to remember just how special we are because we are. We have his love. We have his forgiveness. Let us live as his special people in all that we do and we say, Amen. Please rise, we continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
We pray for uh, the whole church throughout the world. That mm -hmm. as people united in faith and active in love, we may witness to that good news that is ours in Christ Jesus. We pray for all nations of the earth, especially for Ukraine and Russia and other nations of the world who are facing wars and social unrest. That in those places where strife and discord rule, there may be times of peace and reconciliation. And for our own nation, that it may be an ensign of hope. We bring our special petition today to God's throne of grace as we pray for our families. We remember Andy, Dan and Laura, Albert, Bogus and Janet, Addison, Catherine and Francis, and Lunda. Also, we pray for the family of Derek and Zoe, that you be with them as well. And on this Father's Day, we honor especially our fathers, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers, thanking God for the blessings that are received from all caring parents in every generation. And we thank God, our Heavenly Father, for listening to our petitions and responding to them. We pray for the various situations of daily life in which we are placed, especially in our workplaces, in neighborhoods, that we be peace bringers in all of our actions and words. We pray for the special needs of this day, remembering those who are ill and those who mourn, and for all those martyrs of our hearts this day. We remember Susan, Dorothy, Jane and Anna, Francis, Anne and Mike, Rainer and Marianne, Mary, Ritva, Marcus and Risto, Lisette and family, Barbara, Geraldine, Mark, Pastor Gerald and his wife Doreen, and for Pastor Ron. As well, we pray for the members of Faith in London who are going through the same trials and tribulations and for those whom we name in our hearts and minds. Almighty God, we thank you for the life you have given to Mike, Lauren, and Lauren, who are celebrating their birthdays this week. And you, O oh Lord, bless them abundantly and keep them safe in your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. Mighty God, we thank you for giving the sacraments of the altar for us Christians to eat and drink. Let us find favor in your eyes to receive this Holy Communion in faith for the salvation of our bodies and souls. Lead us to remember that by the faithful use of this sacrament, you dwell in us and we dwell in you. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayers. And finally, for all those saints who have completed their earthly journeys in faith and have left us a legacy of love, we thank you, Lord, and faithfully commend all for whom we pray, trusting your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated, we continue collecting the offering, and we will ask you singing the hymn, Jesus Loves Me.
This rise will continue with the post communion task given. Let us pray. O oh God, you have fed your grateful disciples with the true manna, the living bread from heaven, at your table of grace. 
Friends, we implore you that the body and blood of your Son be our support throughout our earthly pilgrimage until we reach that land where there is neither hunger nor thirst. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and remains with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We close in him. What a friend we have in Jesus.